Welcome to the Profits in Pajamas podcast. I'm Danielle DeTeach, or Coach Danny D, and I help women to create luxury brands by creating processes and tightening their branding. This is where we talk about how to build your business in a way that allows you to work with ease and enjoy your life. My happy space is spending as much time as humanly possible in my pajamas, and I want to help others to find their happy space while still running profitable businesses. So get comfortable and let's dig in. Hello and welcome to the Profits in Pajamas podcast. I am your host, Coach Danny D. And this podcast is designed to help women, um, business owners, I know we have some listeners that aren't business owners, but that's okay as well. But it's basically here to help you find that space where you are excelling in your business or your career, but also in your life. So you are meeting those life goals, not just um, traditional success goals. But you're, you know, still being successful in your business. You're still hitting those milestones, but in a way that you are able to enjoy your life. So that's the point of view of the podcast. And um, each week we talk about different topics along those lines. This week, what I want to talk to you about um, over the last few weeks and honestly, just in general, I'm always that... um, that person that people feel very comfortable opening up and sharing their um, vulnerability with. It could be, you know, someone I know, it could be someone I've just met, it could be somebody in the line at the grocery store. It's just, that's just been a thing always. And um, what I've learned through that process. And, you know, especially like in the last week or so, the last two weeks, I've had a few conversations um, with women that I'm either working with or have met in different capacities. And in those conversations, even though the surface issue may be slightly different. So this person may be trying to work through, you know, X, Y, Z, and this person over here is working through A, B, C. The underlying feelings, emotions always tend to be very similar. And one of the phrases that I heard very, very often over the last two weeks is, I feel alone. I feel like I'm the only person that's going through this. I feel like I am trying to figure it out and nobody else seems to understand what's going on or everybody else seems to have it together and I'm still trying to figure it out. I hear that a lot. And, you know, you can't make somebody see something differently. You can, you can share, but, you know, it's not like you could just, you know, download a thought into someone else's brain. But I guess what's so hard sometimes is knowing that, you know, I'm listening to this person and this person's experience and you know, respecting this person's experience, but at the same time, knowing that I may have spoken to, you know, three people that day and it all are sharing that same thought of, you know, that appearance of everyone else having it together. And I share this because I need you to know that you're not alone in how you feel. I need you to know that you're not the only one that feels that way. I need you to know that nobody has lived today before. 
no matter what your experience, no matter how um, experienced you are, no matter how much education you have, no matter, you know, how brilliant you are, you've never experienced today before. And neither has the person next to you. So on some level, everyone is figuring it out as they go. Now, having preparation, doing, you know, research, having prior experience, all of those things play a factor in how you navigate the day. You know, if you have done X, Y, Z before and today you're doing it again, then you are prepared to do that thing. But maybe the last time you did it, it was, you know, a different scenario. Maybe something today may be slightly different. And so now you have to make a game time decision. Now you have to decide in the midst of it, what do I do next? You know, how do I navigate out of this? And again, your past experiences, your um, available resources at the time, all of those different things are going to determine how you navigate that situation, how you find a way to push through in that situation. But I'm saying that to let you know that that is a great equalizer in a lot of ways in the sense that, yes, we've all had our own set of experiences before today. None of us have experienced today before, not a single one. So we all are going into today just carrying our past and working towards a future. Everybody's still figuring it out. I've spoken to people who are, you know, in my opinion, mentors and, you know, they are well experienced, well versed, have done some amazing things that I admire. And when you get down to just basic conversation, when you get down to that comfort, when you get down to that you know, that openness and that vulnerability, they are also still just figuring it out. They still have things that come to them that they have to figure out. But we have to be careful with this comparison piece where we are, because what we ultimately are doing, we're comparing our whole self to someone else's highlight reel. And I don't mean that to say because some people, you know, are kind of can be cynical and say, well, that ain't, you know, that's not the reality. That person is not who they appear to be. That's not what I'm saying at all. That person is, is oh, you know, who they appear to be, but you don't see their inner thoughts. You see what's on the outside and they can be the most open and honest person, but you only see what's on the outside. You don't see their inner thoughts. You don't see when they thought about, you know, what if this doesn't work? You don't see when they thought about, you know, I don't know who I thought I was to do this. You don't see when they thought about quitting you don't see when they were under pressure. You don't see that part because that part happens on the inside. And you blame yourself for feeling how you feel, not knowing that everybody else is feeling that same set of emotions. They're feeling the same way. They're going through normal human emotion and the emotions that you're feeling are normal human emotions. So I just want to share that because I just, I need you to know and understand that. But I also am sharing um, this, you know, commonly this whole concept is referred to as 
imposter syndrome, right? And it's the fact that you feel like you are, you know, kind of faking it till you make it. You feel like you are putting up an appearance of being a certain way, but inside you feel differently. And there's this fear that you're going to be found out, that people are going to figure out that you're not as together as you appear to be. Here's the thing. Nobody is as together as they appear to be. And that's not a slight on anybody. That's not taking anything from anybody's greatness or their brilliance. But we're human. We're all human. We all have self-doubt. We all have um, insecurities. We all have things that trip us up. And what I found to be helpful is to figure out what are the things that trigger that feeling of not being worthy enough or not being secure or doubting yourself on things that, you know, you have a track record of being successful at. What makes us magnify our um, negative experiences, but not our, our positive what makes us see ourselves in a way that's different than how others see us? Because I think sometimes underlying that imposter syndrome is the fact that we think that we've tricked everyone into seeing this greater self and we're scared that they're going to realize that we're not that greater self. But People, and especially people who know you, see you as beautifully human. They see you as beautifully human. And what I mean by that is, it's not that they don't see you, the full version of you. I mean, you know, sometimes people don't if they don't really know you, but people who know you see you in your fullness and they still think that you're magnificent. But for some reason, you think that they don't or you don't think it about yourself because you think that those things that you think in private those things that keep you up at night, those emotions that you feel, you think that those things mean that you aren't. You think that those things mean that you're a fraud. You think that those things mean that you're not good enough. You think that those things mean that, you know, you have not achieved some level because you know, somewhere somebody told you to be fearless. And so because you still experience fear, you haven't made it, right? Fear is a natural emotion. Anxiety is an emotion. Doubt, all of those things, most of them are tied back to fear. But the thing is, they are natural emotions. They are, they have a place. And, you know, I've talked to you guys before about emotional placement. They have a place. They just should not be presiding over what you do. They have a place to make you think, to make you, you know, tighten up what you're doing. Have I thought about all of, you know, the things that I need to think about? But they're not supposed to be uh, paralyzing. They're not supposed to be stopping you from doing what you need to do. They're there just to give a quick report and move on. Um, fear is supposed to tell you whether or not you're going to die. Outside of whether or not you're going to die, fear kind of needs to just kind of take a step back. Um, but it's a, an emotion that you have. It's supposed to be a part of what you do. Um, it's supposed to be a part of your life, let's say like that. It's a part of your life is just not a guiding force. We have to pull her out the driver's seat, as I like to say. We have to put her in the back seat. She can ride with us. 
she can tell us oh as a pothole but she's not the driver we have to change that dynamic and we have to make our confidence our confident self put her back in the driver's seat but sometimes it really involves figuring out how did fear, how did self-doubt, how did anxiety get the keys in the first place? Figuring that out, working that out, but from a place of grace, because we tend to beat ourselves up, we tend to get frustrated with ourselves. We have to come from a place of grace and understanding that we are not alone. We are not going through this alone. We choose to isolate because of that fear of somebody figuring us out, right? So we choose to isolate. This is probably one of the most common conversations that I have with, with people, with women. It typically centers around this. It may, you know, there may be a business need, there may be a something else need, but it typically boils down to this. And so I'm sharing that again to let you know you are not alone. But I also want to challenge you because if you continue to deal with this in isolation, you are choosing to be alone. That isolation makes you feel alone. So when you are dealing with this in isolation, you're choosing to be alone. And, you know, I use the word challenge, so I'm going to keep going down this vein. Um, so I am running a challenge in June, and it is the Capable and Confident Challenge. That challenge is challenging you to ditch imposter syndrome. And when I say ditch it, I don't mean that you're, again, I believe I am a believer of your emotions being a part of you and they will carry on with you. What I mean by that is you're going to still have emotions come up. But one, what is the root of those emotions? What is triggering those emotions? So what's the root? What's triggering them? And then what can you do to then redirect? What can you do to then keep yourself in the space of confidence? Keep your keep confidence in that driver's seat because fear, self-doubt, anxiety, are always going to be trying to grab for those keys. They're always going to be trying to ride shotgun. So what can you do to change that? What can you do to make sure that they're sitting in the back seat with the child safety locks on? How can you navigate that? And so that's what this challenge is all about. And I felt very strongly about creating this challenge because it just kept coming up it kept echoing it kept echoing it kept echoing of you know all of these people that I'm looking at and I see their brilliance I see their um strength in their fields I see their greatness and so do others around them but there's that part that keeps pulling back and, and to be, you know, 100% honest, I've experienced it. You know, I, I have, you know, gone through that process of, okay, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, Lord, you sure this was what I was supposed to do. I've gone through that process. I've had that experience. So, I understand what it feels like, what it looks like. And I know that by working through, where does this creep in? Where does it come from? What do I do having a plan? I'm a planner. <laughs> I am a planner. Having a plan 
for when it happens. It's kind of like, you know, if you are, let's say if you have allergies and you know that you have, you know, certain allergies, you know, you know what those allergies are, right? You know, I have a peanut allergy. I have a, you know, a um, shellfish allergy. You know what it is, right? You know what that allergy is. You know how to treat it when something happens. And so you have a plan. You have, you carry an EpiPen with you or you have Benadryl, you know, with you at all times because you know that this is a possibility and you have a plan of how to treat it. It's no different. You have to know what it is. You have to know how it's triggered and you have to know how to plan to redirect yourself so that when it happens, you are prepared and you're not overcome. So that's what the challenge is about. I'm challenging each of you even before the challenge. The challenge starts on June 1st. You can sign up for the challenge at um, capableandconfident.com. The link will be in the show notes, but I'm challenging you before the challenge even begins to challenge yourself to step out and for yourself and for all the other women who think that they're alone and feeling like this, because I know that people, there's some people who want to have that conversation in private but don't want to step out. And I want to challenge you to step out because that's how you overcome. And that's how you realize that, because that's how I realized it. I realized that I wasn't alone because other women shared their vulnerability with me. They shared their experiences with me. And I realize I'm like, oh my God, you think the same things that I'm thinking. You're experiencing the same things that I'm experiencing. But that comes from being brave enough to be open and being brave enough to put yourself in a space, a safe space with people who are also willing to be open and working through it together. So, I'm challenging you to step out. I'm challenging you to join the challenge. And I'm challenging those of you who maybe you are not there yet as far as joining this challenge. Take a step, whatever that step looks like. Take a step in the direction of being more open and more vulnerable And the thing is, is that the more open and vulnerable you become, the less power those things have over you. So those things that you're so scared that if somebody found it out, they're going to think that you're a failure. They're going to think all these things about you. When you learn how to be vulnerable and open about those things, they lose their power. Nobody can hold against you what you share freely. They lose their power and they give you the freedom to be human. You're human. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be perfect. The fact that you are imperfectly human is absolutely perfect. Okay, I'm going to (laughs) go. And I will see you guys in next week's episode. Thank you for listening to the Profits in Pajamas podcast. I hope you got some great tips to start working with ease. Want to stay connected? Follow me at Your Workflow on Instagram. For more information about building your luxury brand, register for my upcoming luxury brand workshop at coachdannyd.com.